we'd like to welcome John Cowart uh, to the uh, Mission Control Center. John, are you there? Yes, sir. Good morning. Thanks hey. for having me. Hey, John. It's good to talk to you again. Yes, sir. You're the uh, partner manager for Space Exploration Technology, SpaceX, and um, uh, I know it's they've got a lot on their plate right now, obviously, with uh, yes, a do. cargo uh, launch that's coming up in the next month or so, but uh, obviously your focus is uh, more on their, their efforts related to the commercial crew program, but uh, start out by telling us a little bit about yourself. You've been with NASA for quite a while. I don't want to date you, <laughs> but uh, I know <laughs> you've been around for quite a while and you worked on a lot of different programs, so uh, set the stage for us with uh, how you got to be the partner manager for SpaceX. Well, let's see. Um, I, I was born uh, down in Mobile, Alabama, but grew up mostly in a little town outside of Atlanta called Tucker. Uh, ended up going to Georgia Tech, where I got an aerospace engineering degree and, and a commission in the Air Force. So then I spent four years out at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California building a shuttle launch pad out there that we never, unfortunately, we never got to use it because of the effects uh, and the fallout from the Challenger disaster that uh, those things had on the shuttle program. But while I was there, luckily, NASA liked what I had done in the Air Force, and they offered me a job. And a great guy named Larry Ellis took a chance on me and hired me as a project engineer to work on Atlantis. And that, that's how I ended up at NASA. But to go kind of even further back and just let folks know why I, I want to be here, uh, what inspired me to join NASA goes all the way back to Christmas Eve in 1968 when I was a nine-year-old kid who was trying desperately to get to sleep so that Santa would bring my new bike, because, you know, he won't come unless you're asleep. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, so at some point, uh, I'm, I'm laying there trying, trying hard to get to sleep. My mom walks in the room and says she wants me to see something. So she took me out on the back porch, and she pointed out the moon. And I was, I was certain she was going to tell me that I was about to see Santa fly in front of the moon. But what she told me was that three men from Earth, Three men from NASA were orbiting the moon right then, and they were going to be talking back to Earth shortly. So I came back inside, and my dad was adjusting the rabbit ears on the TV, and, and I got to listen to Borman, Lovell, and Anders uh, talk to us from the moon. And, and so that's what got me inspired to want to come work for NASA. Oh, that's that's a great, great story. Um, so now that you've you know transitioned over to commercial crew, talk a little bit about your role um, with SpaceX as a partner manager, you know, representing NASA to uh, SpaceX? Well, I tell you, uh, working with SpaceX is fascinating. They are a young, vibrant group of folks, and I love the energy I get whenever I go to their facilities in, out there in Los Angeles or in McGregor, Texas, where they uh, test their engines, or here at the Cape where they do all their launch activities. My role is to lead the best pit crew in NASA as we work with SpaceX, trying to nurture their ability to, to safely and reliably take our astronauts to and from the ISS in the future, we sure hope. Well, you know, this um, I've asked, I talked to Sarah yesterday as her role specifically with um, EAI, but, um, um, you know, we're working under the Space Act agreements with, with these different companies, but... Uh, um, you know, you talked, to, I guess you've already touched kind of on the integration part, but, uh, and you do a lot of traveling associated with that, but right. it's kind of a new way of doing business, but, you know, obviously there's a lot of excitement there, but how, how have they received you as being integrated with them and, and vice versa? It's been, been very well received so far. Uh, the good news for, for folks who think we're doing just this radically new thing here, the good news is that uh, all of us, in, in on my pit crew have worked in human spaceflight before and, and we've worked and therefore we have worked with private companies already so we have some sense of what goes on in a private company it's not like the first time we've ever gone to a, a contractor or a partner's site the difference now of course being under a space act agreement is that we do not dictate designs or design solutions and right now the partners don't come to us with a kind of a mother may I approach. It is much more collaborative when we talk, when we have our, our technical meetings and we discuss back and forth the merits of a, uh, of a particular design that they might be thinking of. Uh, it, some of that uh, integration obviously involves, and part of the structure of the SAA or the Space Act Agreement, I guess, is the 
the milestones. Can you talk a little bit about, at least at where commercial crew is concerned with SpaceX, how, what those milestones are that they've actually um, met so far and what's kind of coming up for them? Well, sure. Um, they have primarily so far been working to develop their own version of a launch abort system. Uh, their system uses a, a derivative of a, a smaller maneuvering jet they already have called a Draco. But this new one is, is, uh, is a Draco on steroids, and they call it a Super Draco. They've also been working to design the interior of their Dragon capsule to accommodate the astronauts. So physically, they've done a couple of iterations of their Super Draco design to optimize its performance and, and its uh, size operating limits. The sorts of trades one would, would normally do early in a design. And they've even gone so far as to rig up a temporary test stand to actually ring out some of the design options, and, and they fired their test development engine. As far as the uh, design of the Dragon interior, they've rigged up a mock-up and have actually had we've had uh, some NASA astronauts go out there and along with some of their design folks evaluate the design at, at this particular stage. Now, in the future, it, it's about to get even more interesting as they are actually going to manufacture flight-like components for their Super Draco engines. And they are in the final stages right now building a test stand for uh, those particular components and that engine altogether. Once uh, once they have talked with us about these components and shown them to us, and, and we, we've had a few discussions, and we both agree that it's time to test them, uh, it's going to be really cool because that's one of the things that uh, many of us became rocket scientists for was because we get to play with rocket engines and do the smoke and fire thing. So we're, we're all looking forward to the upcoming engine test that will happen out there in Texas. Um, and as far as uh, the Dragon and, its, uh, and the human system testing and doing there, they have completed one crew trial test, as they call it, where, they, as I said, they brought the astronauts out. The next one will actually involve the use of suit simulators and a little bit higher fidelity. Each time we do one of these crew trials, you get a little bit better fidelity inside the Dragon capsule of what it's going to be like. But uh, the next one we think is going to be particularly cool because they'll be wearing spacesuit simulators. Now, these are not the actual spacesuits they'll fly. Uh, they're not even at what I would call a prototype phase. What, what these suits will be for in the next test is to demonstrate to the astronauts and, and the test subjects on board the limits of their reach. You know, because when you wear a spacesuit, you can't reach everywhere you want to. You're restricted. Your vision is a little bit limited because of the helmet you're wearing. So those are the things they, they want to make sure they, they capture in this next crew trial test. And uh, obviously with the crews that's uh, invaluable because they've actually been up there and and you, you know you can sense that they know you know how to design a spacecraft but bring them out there actually to take part is is a big help in that in that area right and design absolutely yeah the the crew loves going out there and, and seeing what's going on because they know at some point in time uh, they could well be riding that rocket in that capsule so it's, it's very important to them and they love doing it and spacex loves getting their uh, their input on that as well well, you know, you've worked on a lot of different programs, and now you're you're on this quote new program of commercial crew. But um, how how do you describe your job to family and friends now? Oh, I, I tell them I'm having an awful lot of fun. That I'm helping the uh, the private sector make spaceflight uh, available to everyone, not just highly trained astronauts. Be, but because of what we are doing, someday. And, and that's now sooner rather than later, I truly believe. Ordinary folks will be riding into space much like uh, we get into an airplane now and ride around the, ride around the whole planet, uh, visiting far-flung places. So I, I think that day is coming, and commercial crew has helped ushering it in more quickly. Well, that's great, John. I, I know you're busy down there, and we really appreciate you uh, taking time out to join us here in Mission Control. Obviously, uh, the goal of commercial crew is to get a spacecraft, a human-rated spacecraft, uh, back in the game on the U.S. side to the International Space Station in low Earth orbit. So, uh, you know, we really appreciate you taking the time out to join us. It's been my pleasure, Kyle. As, uh, as a former mission manager for a couple of pieces of the space station, I'm, I'm anxious to get our boys up there on, uh, on one of our rockets as well. I bet. And th thanks again. That's John Cowart. He is the uh, partner manager for SpaceX, uh, Space Technologies, uh, incorporated uh, out in uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida where he's based part of the commercial crew program.